so what are the once once we've we've sort of you know established a presence within our solar system and we know how to get around what's beyond that well already we physicists are looking at starships nasa has a 100 year starship program uh, my colleague uh, the former stephen hawking already was responsible for the breakthrough starshot program to send the first starship to a nearby star it would be the size of a postage stamp it's a chip with a parachute inflated by a bank of laser beams which would accelerate it to 20 percent the speed of light and it would reach alpha centauri in 20 years and so we are talking about the first microchip starship to take us to the heavens and then we physicists have looked at ramjet fusion engines fusion engines of course we don't have them yet but one day we will ramjet fusion engines require no fueling whatsoever they scoop up hydrogen in the forward direction like an ice cream cone burn interstellar hydrogen in the engine and run forever with no refueling whatsoever that's the ramjet fusion engine which could possibly take us to the nearby stars and then even beyond that there's a possibility of maybe using a black hole and of course uh, just this morning we had the first picture ever of a black hole that's been revealed to the public and what is a black hole a black hole is a cosmic roach motel. Everything checks in, nothing checks out. And we photographed it. And there's a controversy as to what's on the other side of the black hole. Some people say nothing. Things just fall in and that's the end of the story. But if you look at the mathematics, we have an exact solution of Einstein's equation given by Roy Kerr in 1963 of a rotating black hole. A rotating black hole does not collapse to a dot. That's the old-fashioned thinking. It collapses to a ring, a ring of neutrons. And if you fall through the ring of neutrons vertically, you wind up in Wonderland. You wind up on the other side of forever. It's a gateway to a wormhole. And if you fall through a second time, you wind up on a second parallel universe. So it's sort of like hitting the up button of an elevator. You have different floors each time you go to a different floor every time you go through the gateway. And then the question is, is that a solution of Einstein's equations? And the answer is yes. What's the catch? There's always a catch someplace. And that is, we don't know how stable the wormhole is. That requires us to go beyond Einstein. Einstein's equations give us rotating black holes where there's a gateway to a parallel universe. That's Einstein's theory. However, we don't know what the radiation effects, that is quantum effects, will destabilize it. That's where string theory comes in. String theory is a quantum theory, and we can calculate quantum corrections and calculate the stability of the wormhole. But that is still an active, an active area of investigation. And then the question is, if you go through the wormhole, can you go backwards in time? And the answer is yes. These things are potentially time machines as well. And then the question is, what happens if you go backwards in time, meet your teenage mother before you're born, and she falls in love with you? <laughs> well, you're in deep doo-doo if that happens. <laughs> but yeah, the quantum theory does make possible the fact that you might be able to build a time machine if you can stabilize the Kerr metric.